March 7th, 2009. Night falls early in the Philippines. This is the Agusan Marsh, home to thousands of crocodiles. Nighttime hunters that share the marsh with people. Two young girls are on their way home from school. They have no reason to be scared. There's never been trouble with crocodiles. Until now. Only one girl survives. We used to see them, but they didn't attack anybody. Attacking people, that's recent. Something has changed in the Agusan Marsh. A crocodile has gone rogue. And those who've lived to tell the tale say it's an absolute giant. A six meter monster unlike anything ever seen in the swamp before. And they want it caught. Two years and just five kilometers from where the girls were attacked, villagers catch a massive crocodile. All night long, they struggle to haul it back to the village. It's alive. It still wants to fight. It's clearly an exceptional animal. But the real question is, have they just caught the largest croc on record? And will that finally bring an end to two years of terror? The Agusan Marsh lies on the island of Mindanao in the southern Philippines. It's an almost pristine wetland the size of the city of Chicago. At the southern end lies Lake Mihaba. The enormous network of lakes, rivers, and marshland is an ideal habitat for crocodiles. People live here for the same reason as the crocs. The fishing is good. Some build their houses floating right on the water. Others live in stilt houses dotted around the marsh. In the rainy season, the water level can rise by four meters. It seems idyllic, but something strange has happened. For two years, this water has brought misery and terror. A massive crocodile stalked the villagers. It ripped their precious water buffalo to shreds before their eyes. Attacked one fisherman and his son. And snatched another man from his boat to eat him alive. But it all started with the attack on the schoolgirls on Lake Mihaba, in the heart of the marsh. It's six o'clock, already nightfall. 11-year-old Marina Ruiz and her friend Edgel Rodrigo are heading home from school. Fisherman Roy Dagas follows right behind. None of them knows that they're being watched by a crocodile about to start a killing spree.
Sitting up front, Rowena never sees it coming. Roy saves Etchel from what looks like a monstrous crocodile. But Rowena is decapitated. Seeing her head in the crocodile's mouth was disgusting. Later on, we found her body covered with banana leaves. It was really smelling bad. Rowena's dugout canoe still bears the scars of the attack. This is Rowena's boat, and these are the bite marks left by the crocodile. Here, here, and here. What kind of monster can bite through solid wood? The culprit is a saltwater crocodile, or salty. They're the largest of all living crocodilians, typically reaching four to five and a half meters. Salties prefer fresh water, but can live in the sea because they're able to excrete salt through special glands. They've spread thousands of kilometers across the ocean to colonize lands from India to Australia. Salties have been hunted to the brink of extinction in much of Southeast Asia for their fashionable and highly sought after hides. They also have the strongest bite of any animal. The Agusan Marsh is one of the last strongholds of salties in the Philippines. Since 1994, the crocodiles here are fully protected. Killing one could land you 12 years in prison. The tables have turned. Now the people are being hunted. Roy Dagas is badly shaken by the attack. I was afraid that Rowena's parents would blame me for her death and kill me, since I was the one who picked her up. With a rogue crocodile in their midst, no one feels safe. But they have nowhere else to go. 70% of the people here make their living by fishing. We wouldn't get any work in town because my husband is a fisherman. So we have to stay here in the Agusan Marsh. We have no choice but to stay here. The people who live in the marsh are mostly an ethnic minority known as the Manobo. They live a mostly traditional lifestyle in one of the poorest areas of the Philippines. Completely dependent on the marsh for their livelihood. After years of peaceful coexistence, people here suddenly live in fear of crocodiles. We stay inside most of the time because we are scared. We only go outside when Roy is around. We used to see them, but they didn't attack anybody. Attacking people, that's recent. Because the crocodiles are strictly protected, the villagers can't hunt the croc down until the government issues a permit. Meanwhile, children go to school, and the men still have to go out fishing to feed their families. Roy's brother, Rinaldo de Gas, is fishing with his son at their favorite spot in the marsh, right in the beast's lair. Fishing from the low-sided canoe, they're sitting ducks when the monster croc attacks. The pair fights back. I hit it on the side of its head with my paddle. Then it bit the side of the boat. It was very close. They bolt to the bank for safety. Reynaldo cheats death, one of the few who lived to tell the tale. I thank the Lord for saving me that night, or I would have been dead meat. 
Just downriver from Lake Mihaba lies the village of San Marcos, population 1,075. The village has no electricity or running water. It's the main base for the Manobo, including people who live in floating houses and retreat here in the rainy season. Rudy Ayala is the chieftain of this area. The biggest threat to crocodiles here is the growing number of people moving into the crocodiles' territory, competing with them for food and space. Competition for fish in the lake could be causing the big croc to seek out new food. In San Marcos, it's found a ready supply. The people throw their garbage, including animal carcasses, in the water. The crocodile has been spotted in the river that runs through the village. Rudy lays down the law. The advice is simple. Don't lure the crocodile into the village with easy meals. It seems to work. There are no further attacks near San Marcos. Instead, the crocodile sets off in a different direction. It's been spotted five kilometers south of Lake Mihaba, and it's about to kill again. Nueva Era is a remote village set back from the marsh. The small stream that flows through it is the sole source of water for 1,300 residents. A 15-meter wooden bridge is the only safe crossing, especially now that the croc is in their creek. It's a long way from home, having swum through a network of rivers and creeks to reach the village from Lake Mihaba. Local farmer Daniel Oxtero has already worked a full day on the land. After dinner, he has to go out fishing, working a double shift to feed a wife and seven children. He doesn't go far. Fishing near the bridge, he's within earshot of his younger sister. Daisy's house overlooks the creek. Even though it was dangerous to be on the creek at night, Daniel had to go fishing so he could buy rice the next day and feed his family. Without knowing it, Daisy hears her brother's final moments. The night that Daniel disappeared at about 9 p.m. p.m. It was dead quiet in the village. I felt like I was the only one awake. Then the dog started to bark angrily. And then I heard splashes in the water, very loud splashes. I was terrified, so I went to bed. The next morning, one of our relatives came to tell me that Daniel had gone missing. Despite repeated attempts to find his body, all that was ever found of Daniel was his boat and his hat. This picture is the only memory we have of Daniel because just before he was killed, his house burned down and everything he owned was destroyed. This was Daniel's house, but it burnt down. He was building another one when he went missing. Daniel's family lost a provider and a much-loved father and son. Of course I miss him. He's my son. Perhaps it was fate. He was a fisherman, and maybe this is a fisherman's fate. The fate of Daniel's killer is also sealed. 
the government in Manila has finally issued a permit to hunt down the rogue crocodile. As long as it's taken alive, there's only one man for the job. Croc legend Ronnie Sue Miller has been hunting nuisance crocodiles for 20 years. This will be his most dangerous mission yet. Members of Daniel's family are eager to show Ronnie to where the attack happened. I really want them to catch that crocodile because I want to see if it ate my brother. I am scared of the big crocodile. We're especially afraid for the children. There are lots of children here. The children don't swim here anymore, but they're in great danger any time they come close to the creek. The water's edge is a favorite hunting ground for crocodiles. They're ambush predators. It's a strategy honed over millions of years. By lowering their heart rate to two beats per minute, they can stay submerged for an hour without breathing, waiting for prey to stray into the strike zone. The attack is sudden and fast. Death can be slow. Crocodile teeth are not for chewing. They're for holding the prey, while the croc uses brute strength to rip it to pieces. They spin to tear off chunks from large prey, the infamous death roll. Smaller prey is shaken to pieces. Ronnie's plan is to use the croc's own preferred hunting strategy to capture it. A morsel of chicken suspended just above the water is an irresistible lure. So that's the principle. When one it is grabbed by the crocodile, the, the crocodile will run away and this will close down. This will cut the, the upper jaw. In Ronnie's experience, a snare is least likely to injure a crocodile. This is a hard job. Uh, because we have to make sure that it's uh, we have to capture it alive. Ronnie posts a sentry in a nearby treehouse. Now, it's a waiting game. In the morning, the bait is gone and the trap is torn. A crocodile has done the impossible, snapped the steel cable and escaped. The cable snapped. I think we're dealing with a much bigger crocodile than we expected. Ronnie sets more traps. For the villagers, it's a terrifying wait. They find trap after trap in shreds. The croc must be huge. Three weeks later, a trap finally holds. This time, they've got it. Several dozen men strain in a tug of war with a powerful crocodile on the end of their line. The beast is so heavy and so powerful that it takes several hours to haul it in. It's clearly no ordinary crocodile. But it's only when they finally land it that they realize exactly what they're up against. It's immense. Sixty people work all night 
to drag the beast a kilometer and a half back to the village. It's over a ton of muscle, power, and killer instinct. As word spreads that they've caught the killer, more and more jubilant onlookers flock to the creek. Everyone wants to get close to the enormous animal now that he's tied down. There's plenty of fight left in the croc. For a moment, everyone's heart stands still. The ropes only just hold. But the hard part is yet to come. They have to transport the enormous reptile 11 kilometers to a purpose-built tourist park at Consuelo, near the main road. The problem is, the road to the park is on the other side of the creek. And the only bridge is far too rickety and narrow. They have to transfer the killer crocodile to a makeshift pontoon and float him across. struggle for 24 hours. Victory. The party goes on deep into the night. Morning finds the monster the star attraction at the Echo Park. Its pond was initially going to be a swimming pool for children. It's clearly a male. He weighs more than 1,040 kilos. Female salties rarely exceed 160 kilos and grow no more than four meters. This guy looks to be over six. They call him Lolong. Lolong could get them into the Guinness Book of Records. They finally get a good look at him, but the villagers have second thoughts about whether this is the killer croc. That's not the right one, is it? No, it's too small. In the cold light of day, they say that no matter how big he is, he's just too small to be the killer. Roy Dagas, who was with Rowena when she died, is certain that this is not the croc he saw that night. It's too late to prove Lalong killed Rowena two years ago. But Daniel Oxtero has only been missing a few months. Could his remains still be inside Lalong's stomach? Crocodiles swallow large chunks of prey, bones and all, without chewing. They have the strongest stomach acid of any animal. Flesh will be dissolved in days, bones in a matter of weeks. But they can't digest anything made of keratin. So horns or human hair and fingernails can remain inside the croc for months. It's a long shot. But the people are desperate for answers. They can't slice him open. The next best thing is to pump his stomach. As soon as news of the capture breaks, Ronnie rushes back to the village to look for proof. He inserts a length of plastic tube down the croc's gullet. Then he pours bucket after bucket of water into him. 
until the croc vomits violently. Ronnie doesn't find any human remains. The stomach pumping is inconclusive. It's possible they didn't get everything out, or that Lolong had coughed up a hairball before they caught him. It's also possible that another giant crocodile killed Daniel, and that it's still out there. Life is returning to normal on the island of Mindanao, but it's not safe to go back in the water. Giant crocodile sightings continue, even after the capture of the monster croc, Lolong. Ronnie Sue Miller is called back for duty. I am going back to capture the big crocodile, bigger than Lolong, because the villagers are endangered. Lolong could have taken to the creeks because a more aggressive male chased him out of the lake. It's a frightening prospect. The first place to look is Lake Mihaba in the heart of the marsh. Agusin's crocs are notoriously shy, so the best chance of finding it is at night. We are going to Lake Mihaba to spotlight and hopefully to see large crocodiles. With a local guide, he ventures into the crocodile's world at the most dangerous time. Every attack so far has occurred at night. It's uh, dangerous uh, to do this in this lake because of the presence of the large crocodile. But uh, using flashlight, normally they will not attack. They're not alone. There are hundreds of crocodiles all around them. One of them could be the giant killer. In this lake, it could be two or three uh, large crocodiles. Uh, could be as large as uh, Lolo, uh, maybe 20 feet. They see lots of smaller crocs. Ronnie spots a likely suspect. Or it could just be the light playing tricks. This is the area where Ruina was attacked by the crocodile. So the boat was uh, capsized. They don't want to be the next victims, so Ronnie calls it a night. Then he gets another break in the case. Near Nueva Era, he hears of a rare sighting of a giant crocodile in broad daylight. He misses it by only hours. Hello. Hello. Did you see a crocodile over here? Yes, at about 11 o'clock. So uh, this is where its head was positioned? Yes, with its shoulders over here. How big do you estimate its head was? It was huge, and he had his mouth open like this. With a stick, Ronnie measures where the head was so he can estimate the croc's total length. So they're at the pit. I've never seen a crocodile like this. This is almost 40 feet, I should say. It's really a huge crocodile. Even for a skeptic, it's scary to imagine the croc that hauled out here. Then Ronnie discovers that this is not the first time that someone has reported a 12-meter croc around Nueva Era. A few months ago, Javar Abdul saw a colossal crocodile take down his prize water buffalo, or carabao. Imagine the croc that could take down one of these. A fully grown carabao weighs almost 500 kilos. Losing an animal like this is like losing a tractor. They are livelihood. We used them to plow the fields and to haul logs. It was a huge loss for me because it was the only carabao I had. 
the monster dragged the massive carabao downstream, but got stuck under the bridge, so Javar got a good look at the culprit. So why couldn't the croc pull the carabao under the bridge? The water level was too high, so the legs of the bridge were blocking it. And how many crocodiles were there? Two. Two? Were they different sizes? Yes, a big one and a smaller one. Then he drops a bombshell. The smaller one was Lolong. How big do you estimate the big one was? I estimate more or less from that point over there to the far side of the bridge. OK, let's measure that. Instead of one giant croc chasing another out of Lake Mihaba, it seems two giant crocs were feeding together. And the second one was even bigger than Lalong. Wow, 12 meters, ang taas. Oh, dako yun yung buaya kay 12 meters man. Ronnie now has two sightings of a croc even larger than Lolong, the one they captured. And no incriminating material in Lolong's stomach. So another croc could be responsible. Good news. An expert is on his way to measure Lolong and see if he's a contender for the world's largest croc. Dr. Adam Britton is the go-to guy for crocodiles for the Guinness Book of World Records. He certified the current record holder only a few months ago. At 5.5 meters, Australia's Cassius Clay is the world's largest captive crocodile. The long could be bigger. Nothing can prepare Adam for what he's about to see. Here we go, Adam. Let's so see this Lolong. is this is Lolong. Yep. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh, he's absolutely huge. Uh, that's low, it's incredible. Huh? Yeah. So really huge. I think he's the biggest he's crocodile biggest I've ever seen. Yeah. To qualify for the Guinness record, Adam has to ensure Lolong lies perfectly flat and dead straight. So how do you measure a giant man-eater? It would be good to do it actually down the crocodile's back. Very carefully. I'm actually going to inject him with two different drugs. Uh, one is a muscle relaxant, and the other one is um, Valium. So he'll actually, hopefully, be quite happy while we're measuring him. <laughs> while he's under, the long is in danger of overheating, so he must be constantly hosed down. Adam has never sedated a crocodile this big before, and he's not sure how long it will take. But it's a large crocodile, and it's going to take a long time. Relative to how long it normally takes, it's going to take a long time for this drug to actually take effect. First, he has to get the needle into the monster croc. Adam gets dangerously close to the largest salty he's ever seen. So, yeah, Ronnie, if you can... If you can keep a close eye on him, yep. you see he's got his left legs backwards, so he's uh, still quite relaxed. But look for any signs like he starts to lift uh, okay. himself up or starts this, to this move his head. This is now in a relaxed position. That's a, he's in yeah. a relaxed position right yeah. now, yes. I, I can get out of the way quite easily, and I'm going to go that way uh, if anything happens. Adam has nerves of steel, but Lalong reminds him who's the boss. He felt that. He's got, he's got some really powerful muscles that run down his tail, and this is intramuscular. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go between the scales here. You see, this, this skin is so soft, it'll just go straight in. If I were to try and get it through there, it's actually quite tough. Okay. Oh. OK. 
musky. It's like a big mosquito. Wow, even that bent the needle. <laughs> that was simply because he moved his tail. So the, the power of the muscles in the tail bent the needle while it was inside. 30 minutes later, the long is still showing no signs of feeling sleepy. It's actually good. Every time he swings like this, then his blood is pumping. Uh -huh. And the sedative that we put in will take effect more quickly. Okay. The sedatives are still showing very little effect. But Adam has drugged Lelong as much as he dares. Too much could kill him. They're going to have to shut those massive jaws by force. We have to remember that this crocodile is huge, is enormously heavy, very powerful. Adam can't do it alone. He's going to need some help. We're going to use six people for this procedure. He's going to have, by the time we've finished here, he's going to have two ropes on his jaws. So one person on either side of his head is going to hold those ropes nice and tight. Then I'm going to jump on the back of his neck and push his head down. This is after I put a towel on his eyes. I'm going to get one person then behind me to help me keep weight on his chest. And then two more people on his back legs. And we're going to lift his legs up off the ground so that he doesn't have any leverage with those legs. And he's still going to be stronger than us, really. I mean, he's huge, incredibly powerful, strong crocodile. But it's amazing, when you get on the back of the head, particularly, and you, you cover the eyes and you put pressure down there, they, they often give up. They'll just sit there and say, OK, do what you need to do. Fingers crossed, anyway. Ronnie rounds up five volunteers. They have to get in the pen with a giant crocodile and sit right on his back. OK, let's go and test him first and see if that drug is taking any more effect. Yeah, he uh, just poke him, just touch him gently there. You see the way he tried to flick his head then? <laughs> He's definitely lost some of his strength. They place towels over Lolong's eyes to help keep him calm. Okay. Holy mackerel. OK, quick, grab his, grab his legs. Now we need someone. OK, everyone on, someone with the tape now to tape his jaws. It only sticks to itself. One more, that's good. OK, break him off. Scientists know very little about giant crocodiles. Also, I'll take one off. This is the first time anyone's been able to measure a living croc over six meters. OK, is everyone good? Yep. OK, good job. I mean, I'm so used to doing this, but everything's scaled up. It's amazing. <laughs> it's like measuring a dinosaur. It's just, <laughs> it's amazing. I'm not used to this. 84. 84, what was the name? 84, that's the interorbital. OK. I'm Adam takes this camera. rare chance to make okay. detailed measurements. 255. Four, it's actually 496. What do you say? You're 450. Finally, yeah, okay, 450, the one exactly. everyone's waiting for. Now for the moment of truth. Dr. Adam Britton is going to measure snout to tip along the curve of Lolong's body. Yeah, yeah that's good. Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right, okay. just make sure this goes straight down the middle again. This, yeah. is, yeah. this is the one that oh, has oh, to oh, be. Yeah, yeah. Can I get someone to hold this? <laughs> 6170. Which is the largest saltwater crocodile in the world. Six one seven zero. In fact, that's the largest crocodile in the world. Full stop. Six one seven zero. The long is six point one seven meters long, the largest known living crocodile, by more than a half a meter. Time for a photo opportunity as Adam declares a new Guinness World Record. The official size of Lolong is 6.17 meters. I 
to give him a round of applause for that. That's, that's very impressive. <laughs> How did Lolong get so big? Adam thinks he was born to it. And that he could have big brothers with the same giant crocodile DNA. As with humans, nurture is just as important as nature. Crocs grow most when they're young, but any stress inhibits growth. Only one or two siblings in a clutch reach their full potential. In his formative years, Lolong must have had plenty of food and few competitors. There were also far fewer people in the marsh to stress him out with their outboards and dynamite. Adam has what he's come for, but getting off again is almost as hard. Everyone from the back. We'll go backwards, all the way backwards, straight up. You last? Yes, yes. And then I will come off and I will take the, ta take the, uh, the towel off. So what you need to do now is cut this rope, cut this tape, sorry. Everyone ready to go back? Go, go, go. Backwards. Keep going. Keep going. You too? Yeah. OK, now you can... While Lolong is still a bit groggy, Adam can't resist the temptation to get his first really close look at the business end of a six-meter croc. This is probably the most powerful set of jaws in the world, with teeth that'll make a meal of anything unfortunate enough to get too close. One thing that's interesting with these big crocs is the size and the shape of the head varies a lot. Lolong's is quite wide. So, it's actually very interesting. He's got all these incredible, gnarly ridges all the way down the front of his snout. But you look at his head and it's, it's so flat and wide. Oh, and now he's opening his eyes to look at me. So, well, if he's looking at me, I'm going to move a little bit further out of range. So a saltwater crocodile has got the strongest bite of any animal, without question, and particularly low long i mean this will be if we were to measure this bite it would be the strongest that had ever been measured it's quite amazing but if you're going to have such an incredibly strong bite then the jaws have got to be strong enough so that they don't splinter when you bite down on something like a turtle for example and the whole shape of the crocodile's head is really designed to give it that strength so that it's reinforced so if he bit down on something then <laughs> it's not going to it's not going to escape which reminds me, I better step back so before I actually test this myself. Lolong is now officially the world's largest crocodile. His newfound fame is a massive boon to the community's tiny economy. In just the first few months, he brings in over $11,000 from tourists. There's a thriving cottage industry of Lolong-related goods. Their once mortal enemy has become a source of pride. However, there is still no proof that Lo Long killed anyone. The attacks probably started because more and more people are moving into the crocodile's territory. And crocs are smart. Once they're onto an easy meal ticket, they'll keep coming back. There have been no more deaths since Lo Long's capture. Still, the rumors of another giant croc won't go away. And after Adam and Ronnie go home, the people of the Agusan Marsh will still be living with thousands of crocs just meters from their houses. They've caught the world's largest crocodile, and they have a pen ready for his bigger brother. No matter what the experts say, the people believe that the real killer is still out there.